Good evening medicos, myself Dr. Krishneshiri and our channel is back again. So we were discussing about the symptoms of neurology one by one, is it not? So today in this fine evening we are going to discuss about the most important symptom of nervous system that is weakness and paralysis. So before going to weakness and paralysis we should be having basic understanding about the anatomy and physiology of the nervous system. So, for anatomy and physiology, in this session we will deal about the uh, anatomy and physiology in short. So, it will be easy for you to understand in uh, detail in the future. Okay. So, today in our channel we have got a whiteboard. So, we will make our learning more happier hereafter. Okay. So, this nervous system, nervous system is divided into two, is it not? It is the main two divisions are there, central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. So central nervous system includes the brain and spinal cord, peripheral nervous system includes the nerves which comes out from the brain and the spinal cord. So we all know that regarding the brain, brain is the most complex structure, it consists of about 100 billion neurons, 100 billion neurons. So, so many neurons, so many tracks, so many axons, so many dendrites greater than 10 power 15 synapses. Okay, it is hard to, what hard to, yes, it is a fact we should uh, believe that. Okay, this neuron, we are talking about neurons next. Neuron, it is the basic structure of nervous system. Neuron forms the structural and functional unit of nervous system. Okay, so there are so many types of neurons, is it not? So neuron, there are unipolar neuron, bipolar neurons, multipolar neurons and also pseudo bipolar neurons, is it not? So regarding the multipolar neurons. So multipolar neurons includes all the structures. So it is easy for us to understand a neuron when we understand about this multipolar neuron. Okay. So in the multipolar neuron, we shall see the structure of the multipolar neuron. Okay. So this multipolar neuron, it consists of a nerve cell body. It consists of a nerve cell body. This is regarding the multipolar neuron it consists of a nerve cell body and this nerve cell body is also known as soma nerve cell body it is also known as soma this nerve cell body consists of a nucleus okay this is the nucleus and there are so many granules inside the nerve cell body it is known as nissel granules nissel granules okay then this nerve cell body consists of a long structure, it is known as axon. A long structure, it is known as axon. And there are small, small structures, okay, around this nerve, bo nerve cell body, there are soma, there are small, small structures also. Axon is the longest structure. And there are small, small structures in the nerve cell body, it is known as dendrites. So many small structures in the nerve cell body, it is known as dendrites and this long cell body, long structure which is in attachment with the nerve cell body is known as axon, axon, no doubts, small structures are dendrites and long structure is axon, okay, then this is dendrite, dendrites and axon. So, what is the function of this dendrite and axon? This dendrite, it is responsible for receiving the impulses, receiving from the impulses from the other nerves. Dendrite, so it is the input source. Okay, dendrite is the input source. It receives impulses. This impulses are received to the nerve cell by means of this dendrites. You understand? Then this axon is the output source, okay. The impulses are transferred to the other nerve cell body or to the muscles by means of this axon, you understand. So this axon, it consists of a covering known as myelin sheath. It consists of a myelin sheath 
and this myelin sheath in the central nervous system it is formed by, from the what you know about that it is it is oligodendrocytes this myelin sheath in the central nervous system it is formed from the oligodendrocytes and this myelin sheath in the peripheral nervous system is formed from schwann cells schwann cells there are modified cells in the peripheral nervous system which is responsible for the formation of what myelin sheath it is known as schwann cells schwann cells understand okay so this myelin sheath there are what there are some space is it not in between the in the myelin sheath there is some space it is known as nodes of ranvir nodes of ranvir nodes of ranvir what is the function of these nodes these nodes help in the easy propagation of impulse so as the nodes are here through the myelin sheath this impulses are transferred easily to the other nerve or to the muscle you understand so this is the basic structure of a neuron so neuron forms the major part of the nervous system we know that neurons are the uh, what structural and functional unit of the nervous system is it not now apart from this neurons there are so many other cells so many other cells are supporting cells in the nervous system so many other cells are supporting cells in the nervous system and these cells are known as glial cells and these cells are known as glial cells okay glial cells and this glial cells it is divided into three so there are three types of glial cells present in the nervous system so first one is astrocytes it is known as astrocytes you all know about astronomy le astronomy astro astrology what is mean by astro astro means star so these are star shaped cells of stellate star uh, the shape of the star is also known as stellate le right? so astrocytes are star shaped cells or stellate cells and these astrocytes are responsible for maintaining the biochemical environment okay biochemical environment and also this astrocyte is responsible for maintaining the blood brain barrier so we will be talking all this in detail in the further sessions okay so astrocyte it is responsible for maintaining the biochemical environment and also it is responsible for maintaining the what it is a blood brain barrier astrocytes next is known as oligodendrocytes oligodendrocytes and this oligodendrocyte it is responsible for the formation of myelin sheath it is responsible for the formation of myelin sheath blood brain barrier and also biochemical environment and this second glial cell is oligodendrocyte which is responsible for the formation of myelin sheath in the central nervous system in the peripheral nerves this myelin sheath it is formed by schwann cells you understand schwann cells is a modified form of oligodendrocyte which is present in the peripheral nerves okay then third is microglial cells third is known as third glial cell is micro glial cells and this micro glial cells this is the immune cells or this is for fighting against the infection it is formed from the macrophages and monocytes and it helps the nervous system to fight against the infection to fight against the infection okay you understand three types of glial cells astrocytes oligodendrocytes and micro glial cells next next we will talk about the what uh, synapses synapses regarding the synapses we all know that synapses is formed between the nerve cells or between the nerves and the muscles and this synapses is responsible for the transformation of impulses from one nerve cell to other nerve cell or one nerve cell to muscle okay it is responsible for the transformation of impulses from one nerve cell to other nerve cell or one nerve cell to muscles okay 
So regarding the synapses, we will go to the structure of synapses. Okay. So suppose if the uh, synapse or uh, if the connection is between the nerve cell and a muscle. So we will go to the structure of synapse. Synapse is a connection and it is very very important for the transformation of nerve impulse. So regarding the synapse, it consists of there will be suppose this is the what neuron. Okay. This is the neuron and this is the muscle cell. A thing like that. So we are going to discuss about the synapse and the function or physiology of synapse. Okay. So this is the nerve cell means axon. This impulses are transformed from the nerve cells to the other or to the muscle by means of axon. We all know that. So this is the axon of a particular nerve cell and this is the muscle. You think like that. So this is the connection. Here synapse. Synapse is this one. This forms the synapse. Okay. So we have a presynaptic membrane. This is the so this is the synapse. This is the this is the membrane which is above the synapse, is it not? So it is known as presynaptic membrane. Presynaptic membrane. And we have a postsynaptic membrane. That is a membrane which is after the synapse. It is known as postsynaptic membrane. Okay. And there is a cleft. This is the cleft in between the two membranes. And it is known as synaptic cleft. Synaptic cleft. Okay. So there is a presynaptic membrane, there is a postsynaptic membrane and there is synaptic cleft. So there are so many microtubules in the presynaptic structure. So many microtubules in the presynaptic structure. So through this microtubules what happens is the action potential is transferred downwards. Action potential is transferred downwards by means of this microtubules. Okay. So what happens when there is an action potential coming here through the what presynaptic apparatus, presynaptic membrane. So this uh, from this what axon there is a what coming action potential is coming so what happens once the action potential reaches near the presynaptic membrane once the action potential reaches the presynaptic membrane what happens there will be opening of calcium channels there will be opening of calcium channels in this presynaptic membrane understand so action potential is coming it reaches near the presynaptic membrane. So what happens? There will be opening of the calcium channel in the presynaptic membrane. Then what happens is when, when the calcium channel is opened, there will be a molecule of calcium entering inside. You understand? So what happens is when the molecule of calcium enters inside, there is a vesicle known as what? Synaptic vesicle, synaptic vesicle and this synaptic vesicle is loaded with neurotransmitters. So there are so many neurotransmitters identified in the nervous system which is responsible for the conduction of this nerve impulse. So what happens is calcium channel enters inside and this synaptic vesicle with the neurotransmitters comes in contact with the Synaptic, presynaptic membrane. You understand? Calcium channel enters, synaptic vesicle, it comes in contact with the presynaptic membrane. So, what happens when it comes in contact with the presynaptic membrane? This vesicle breaks open. And what happens is this neurotransmitters will be what? Coming outside to the synaptic cleft. So, in the presynaptic just uh, before uh, inside the presynaptic membrane there is synaptic vesicle so when the calcium uh, when the calcium enters inside this synaptic vesicle comes in contact with the presynaptic membrane and it breaks open and it releases the neurotransmitters inside the synaptic cleft you understand then what happens is this 
neurotransmitters what happens they will open the ligand gated ion channels ligand gated this is the ion channel ligand gated ion channels okay so this ligand gated ion channels opens and the ions will be transformed inside and as a result of that due to this ion transmission ion channels opens and this ions will be transferred inside and as a result of that this action potential will be taken to the what muscle you understand now the transmission of action potential takes place this is the one method by which the action potential is transformed from the presynaptic membrane to the synaptic cleft and to the post synaptic membrane and in turn to the target organ you understand that this is the first method in the second method what happens is the same thing happens so when the calcium channel enters when the calcium enters inside the presynaptic membrane this synaptic vesicle comes in contact with the presynaptic membrane and there will be discharge of this neurotransmitters it breaks open and it will discharge the and it will discharge the neurotransmitters and what happens is it will uh, uh, it will stimulate the enzyme known as adenylyl cyclase it will stimulate the enzyme known as adenylyl cyclase adenylyl cyclase this is the second method so it will stimulate the enzyme known as adenylyl cyclase and this adenylyl cyclase will be taking will be stimulating the transcription transcription what is transcription transcription is the uh, what is transcription is yes, it is the what dna dna is converted to rna la messenger rna messenger rna for the formation of new amino acids proteins and enzymes is it not so it will be stimulating the transcription and when there is a need of enzyme and this transcription will result in the formation of new enzyme if there is need of an enzyme okay so these are the two methods in which the action potential is carried from the presynaptic to post synaptic membrane and inside through the synaptic cleft okay then is yes. then so neurotransmitter stimulates this ion channel so everything has happened so what happens to this neurotransmitter so this neurotransmitters from the synaptic vesicle it is poured outside la in the synaptic cleft so what happens this synap this neurotransmitters it is taken up by the synaptic membrane after its function it is taken up by the synaptic membrane and it is metabolized okay and it is metabolized so this is the what synapses and this is the physiology of synapses and this takes place and this is the uh, process taking place while there is and then a uh, transformation of impulse from the presynaptic membrane to the post synaptic membrane you understand no doubts okay then we will discuss about brain so this is about synapses these are very very important things what i am saying here is very are very very important things in order to know the weakness and paralysis and further function symptoms of nervous system without this basic knowledge you cannot understand anything about the symptoms of nervous system so be attentive please okay next regarding the brain so regarding the brain this anterior portion of the brain okay anterior portion of brain is concerned with executive function it is concerned with doing okay as if gandhi ji told do or die like that this anterior part of the brain it is concerned with doing and the posterior part of the brain it is concerned with perception of the environment okay so this anterior part of the brain it is concerned with executive function and posterior part of the brain it is concerned with perception of the environment so what happens we can maintain a proper homeostasis okay we can maintain a proper homeostasis so this brain all know that brain it is divided into two lobes la the major part of the brain is formed by cerebrum so cerebrum consists of right lobe and left lobe okay right lobe and left lobe and this each lobe of the cerebrum consists of four parts la frontal parietal occipital and temporal 
these are the things you know but you just listen it will be useful for you anywhere in neurology okay so frontal parietal occipital and temporal and this regarding the frontal lobe so there is something known as dominance dominance of hemispheres so what is mean by dominance so we all know that this cerebrum it is concerned with contralateral activities contralateral activities that is right side of the brain is concerned with left side of sorry <laughs> this is not right this is left side is yes. left side of the cerebrum is concerned with right side of the body and right side of the cerebrum is concerned with left side of the body so we will know, we will see what is dominance is yes. dominance means in the right sided person most of us are right sided la right handed not right sided right handed so in most of the right handed person left side will be the dominance so what makes the dominance dominance is because of the what presence of uh, structures areas in regard to language okay presence of uh, areas in regard to language so there are two areas we all know that la for la language that is broca's area and wernick area broca's area is the motor speech area and wernick's area is the sensory speech area and this we all know what we all know what is motor area it is in the frontal lobe and what sensory area what sensory area sensory speech area is in the temporal lobe la temporal lobe broca's area and wernick's area so by the position of this broca's and wernick's area we will be dividing the dominance of the brain so uh, in right handed person dominant hemisphere will be left but what happens in left handed person in 50 percentage in 50 percentage of the left handed person dominant hemisphere will be right you understand so rest rest of the 30 percent or 40 percent left handed person dominant hemisphere will be left you understand in the right handed person the dominant hemisphere will be left in left handed person for about 50 percentage for about 50 percentage dominant hemisphere will be what right but for the rest of the 40 40 percentage the dominant hemisphere will be left you understand so 50 plus 40 is 90 then rest of the 10 percentage it is unknown which is the dominant hemisphere we don't know okay is yes. so broca's regarding the broca's area and wernick's area in relation to the situation of this broca's area and wernick's area and also to a some extent on the handed right handed or left handed the dominance of cerebrum is understood next regarding the frontal lobe we are not going to so many details and all we will say some 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 things okay which is very necessary for understanding the further things i am talking only that we are not going to the detailed anatomy and physiology don't be afraid okay regarding the frontal lobe this frontal lobe we all know what is the function of frontal lobe you just refresh things frontal lobe it is concerned with motor movements la motor movements the muscle strength the muscle strength the movement it is in connection with the frontal lobe and also the most important thing is frontal lobe is concerned with the intelligence of the person it is concerned with the intelligence of the person so our judgment uh, so our memory our things um, um, judgment uh, so how we talk so how we react or everything what is our intelligence everything is con- in concerned with the frontal lobe so prefrontal area is there in the frontal lobe there is something known as prefrontal area which is situated here not here inside this thing so this prefrontal area it is known as the seat of intelligence the intelligence of a person is determined in this prefrontal area understand so frontal lobe it is concerned with the motor activity and also it is concerned with the intelligence higher mental function you say that higher mental function is determined by this frontal lobe you understand then this parietal lobe this parietal lobe it is concerned uh and also in the dominant frontal lobe there will be presence of this broca's area which is the motor speech area then regarding the frontal 
പറയറ്റൽ ടെമ്പറൽ ഓക്സിപ്പിറ്റൽ അല്ല ഫ്രോണ്ടൽ പറയറ്റൽ ടെമ്പറൽ ഓക്സിപ്പിറ്റൽ സോ ദിസ് റിഗാർഡിംഗ് ദ പറയറ്റലോ വി ഓൾ നോ ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് കൺസേൺ വിത്ത് സെൻസറി ഫംഗ്ഷൻ ഫ്രോണ്ടൽ ഈസ് കൺസേൺ വിത്ത് മോട്ടോർ പറയറ്റൽ ഈസ് കൺസേൺ വിത്ത് സെൻസറി ഫംഗ്ഷൻ ആൻഡ് വാട്ട് ഇസ് ദിസ് സെൻസറി ഫംഗ്ഷൻ വി വിൽ സി ആൻഡ് ഓൾസോ ദർ ആർ ടു ഡോമിനൻറ്റ് പറയറ്റേ ലോബ് ആൻഡ് ഓൾസോ നോൺ ഡോമിനൻറ്റ് പറയറ്റേ ലോബ് ദിസ് ഡോമിനൻറ്റ് പറയറ്റേ ലോബ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് കൺസേൺ വിത്ത് കാൽക്കുലേഷൻ ഓക്കെ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് കൺസേൺ വിത്ത് കാൽക്കുലേഷൻ സോ ദിസ് ഡോമിനൻറ്റ് പറ പേഴ്സൺസ് വിത്ത് ഡോമിനൻറ്റ് പറയറ്റേ ലോബ് ആൻഡ് ദോസ് ഹു ആർ സ്റ്റിമുലേറ്റഡ് ബൈ ദിസ് ഡോമിനൻറ്റ് പറയറ്റേ ലോബ് ദർ വിൽ ബി വെരി വെൽ വേഴ്സ്ഡ് ഇൻ മാത്തമെറ്റിക്സ് ആൻഡ് കാൽക്കുലേഷൻ ആൻഡ് ദ നോൺ ഡോമിനൻറ്റ് പറയറ്റേ ലോബ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് കൺസേൺ വിത്ത് constructional activities okay it is concerned with the constructional activities so frontal lobe parietal lobe next is what temporal lobe temporal lobe it is just near to what ear and it is concerned with hearing okay and also dominant temporal lobe it consists of yes vernix area which is the sensory speech area dominant parietal lobe consists of vernix area you understand any doubts if you are having any doubts please you comment in my comment box definitely we will discuss we will find a solution okay next is occipital lobe what is occipital lobe it is concerned with vision you understand frontal motor parietal sensory temporal auditory and this occipital vision but the most important thing is this temporal lobe has a close connection that is indirect connection with what yes the thing which is responsible for the emotional stability so it is concerned with the things which is we will discuss it later so they are responsible they are in close contact with the things which is in response which is in relation with the emotional stability so we will discuss it later so you understand the lobes of the brain is it not this is the simplest explanation and there are so many areas in frontal lobe parietal lobe occipital lobe and temporal lobe broadman's class so many things are there so no need of all those things we understand the basic anatomy and physiology okay next next regarding the nucleus so regarding the nucleus we all know that what is the color of brain very very important what is the color of brain it is gray in color okay color of brain is not white not pink not green it is gray it is gray in color why this gray this brain the cortex of the brain okay the the outer side of the brain it is formed of nerve cells nerve cells which consist of nissel granules which is gray in color you understand nerve cell that is soma nerve cell body soma soma it is formed of soma which consists of nissel granules so it is gray in color and inside of the brain uh, in inside the cortex it is white in color due to the presence of this axons axons consists of myelin sheath which is gl- or glassy white glassy white so it is inside of the cortex it is white in color so regarding the nucleus so we have uh, said that Uh, the outer side of the brain is gray color and inside it is what white color so inside the white color there are groups of nerve cell bodies which acts as the relay station in doordarshan we have relay station right? so something is carried from here or something from the satellite will be reaching the relay station and it is given to all the peripheral things that is what is happening here also so suppose this is the brain you think this is brain okay so suppose this is brain so what happens so brain is gray in color and inside it is white in color and inside the, this is made up of what here it is made up of cell bodies or soma and here there are so many axons there is so many axons synopsis and all which is white in color so inside this so i have another marker also so we will draw in different color so inside this parenchyma inside the uh, white matter gray matter and white matter so inside the white matter there are some what combination of what what uh, this nerve cell bodies 
there are combination of nerve cell bodies and it is known as the nucleus and it is known as the nucleus understand so this is the gray matter this is the white matter inside the uh, white matter there are some group of nerve cell bodies nerve cell bodies and it is known as nucleus and it is known as nucleus and this nucleus it nucleus it is in relation with the relay station so there are so many nucleus so we will discuss about the important nucleus today so the most important nucleus is internal capsule internal capsule internal capsule it is in connection with the motor system okay internal connection internal capsule it is in connection with the motor system next so there are so many nucleus i am saying about the only important nucleus inside the brain which is very very uh, important to understand the what pathology next internal capsule second is what thalamus thalamus so this is internal capsule next is thalamus thalamus is concerned with the sensory activities thalamus is concerned with the sensory activities third is limbic system limbic system limbic system that is amygdala hippocampus etc limbic system so this limbic system it is concerned with emotions so those who are having very active limbic system they will be always cry huh? so this is limbic system limbic system emotions not only crying they will be very much happy for slightest things they will get so much excited for slightest sadness they will be crying like anything so that is limbic system and fourth is hypothalamus hypothalamus it is concerned with what homeostasis homeostasis so these are the most important nucleus you should understand first is internal capsule which is concerned with motor function second is thalamus which is concerned with sensory function limbic system emotions and hypothalamus and homeostasis and this limbic system i will say something that is uh, limbic system which is in close connection with hippocampus and amygdala okay you know all these things hippocampus and amygdala so what is this hippocampus hippo hippo narna it is kudira it is horse like hippocampus so this hippocampus looks like that of a water horse sea horse not water horse sea horse kadal kudira it looks like that of a sea horse so it is known as hippocampus so this hippocampus it is very very important it is a small structure inside the brain but it is a very very important structure what is the importance of hippocampus we all know that nervous system cannot be regenerated once it is destroyed it is destroyed forever in the central nervous system in the brain if the neurons are uh, degenerated it is degenerated we cannot regenerate it so there is no mechanism to regenerate but in the hippocampus what happens is it is the only structure in the brain where mitotic divisions takes place mitosis you know about mitosis so mitotic division takes place only inside the hippocampus hippocampus so what is mitosis mitosis is the addition division alla addition division so in mitosis one cell is converted to two uh two cells and this two cell is converted to four 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 cell is converted to eight ala so this is the addition division each cell is divided into two 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 structures so it is the addition division so this hippocampus is the only structure this is a smaller structure in the brain it is the only structure in the brain where mitotic division takes place and this hippocampus is responsible for long term memory you understand so this cell is dividing 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 and each cell will be having the what this memory will be stored what we have registered first it will be dividing and in each cells this memory will be the long term memory that is why we are remembering twinkle twinkle little star you know that we have studied in lkg la so we are 
continuously studying in LKG, full LKG we are studying twinkle twinkle little star. In UKG also sometimes we will study and in home whoever says to sing a song we will sing twinkle twinkle little star. So what happens it is registered inside and we will not forget twinkle twinkle little star. Is it not? That is long term memory. And also if suppose my name is Krishneshiri and I will remember my name every time. Is it not? Why? Repeatedly I am hearing my name. Everybody will be calling me as Krishneshiri, Krishneshiri. Daily we will be hearing more than 10 times. Right? Our name. So we are remember. If we are not hearing our name. Huh? My name is Krishneshiri and till these years I am not hearing my Then I will not be remembering my name. So this hippocampus, it is responsible, it is the only structure in the brain which can divide mitotically and so it is responsible for long term memory. Please don't forget this very very important. This is hippocampus. You understand? When we are studying about dementia and all, we will be saying about this. At that time I will ask question. Okay. So this is hippocampus. And it is responsible for the long term memory. So this is about the basic things we should know about the brain, nucleus and all. So something about spinal, something about cerebellum. So we are talking about cerebrum till now, the cerebellum. So regarding the cerebellum, since cerebellum, although cerebellum is a smallest structure in comparison with the cerebrum, but what happens is cerebellum has lot of nerve cells and also synapses. Okay. So more than cerebrum, comparing to cerebrum, this cerebellum will be having is having more number of synapses and nerve cell bodies. And this cerebellum, it is we know that cerebrum, when there is something in the right side of the cerebrum, our left side. Again, when there is in the right side of cerebrum, our left side will be affected, is it not? So, in cerebellum, if the right side is affected, if the right side of the cerebellum is affected, in our body also, there will be affection in the right side, you understand? And if left side of, if left side of the cerebellum is affected, then there will be affection in the left side of our body. Why? Because there will be double crossing of nerves in the cerebrum, in, in the cerebellum. In cerebrum, there is single crossing. So the tract crosses from one side to the other. But in cerebrum, what happens? Cerebellum, what happens is, suppose uh, this is right side and this is left side. So this nerve is crossing from the right to the left. So what happens? It becomes contralateral. Then what happens? The same nerve will be crossing from the left to the right in case of cerebellum. So what happens? There is double crossing. So right side of the cerebellum will be controlling the right side and left side of the cerebellum will be controlling the left side. So this is the important thing. Which is this cerebellum it is concerned with the what? balance and also movement. This cerebellum controls the movement. Controls the movement. Then next is brain stem. So cerebrum we know, nuclei we know. Then cerebellum, then brain stem. What, in, what constitutes brain, brain stem? There are three structures in the brain stem. Midbrain, pons and medulla oblongata. Okay. Midbrain, pons and medulla oblongata. This midbrain, pons and medulla oblongata, there is, yes, there are nucleus of the cranial nerves. Nucleus of the cranial nerves are present there and also there will be what? Through the brain stem many tracks, motor tracks will be coming from the brain towards the periphery and from the periphery what happens? Sensory nerves will be traveling from the periphery to the brain. So this is about the brain stem. Then something about spinal cord which is very very essential. Spinal cord, the continuation of the brain to the vertebral column is the spinal cord and this spinal cord uh, is opposite to brain in its structure is it not so brain outside it is gray and inside it is white but in spinal cord outside it is white and inside it is gray okay so you think that it is spinal cord okay everything is assumption <laughs> so This is spinal cord. Ah, okay. This is spinal cord. You think this is spinal cord and
So there is a central canal where CSF passes and also here it consists of, this is the anterior part, okay. This is anterior or ventral part. And this is the posterior part or dorsal part, okay. So this ventral nerve root, this, this ventral part is concerned with the motor activities and the posterior part is concerned with the sensory activities. You understand this much? This is very very important for further understanding. So this is about the spinal cord, outer white matter and inner grey matter. Okay. Then, then one more thing. In this session we will discuss about the pyramidal tract also. So this anatomy will be getting over by this session. Okay. So feeling bored? No. If you are feeling bored, what you should do? Just you stop seeing the video. You go take rest, you drink some juice, you uh, walk around, you see some cereal, again you come, again you uh, what, watch the video. That's the only thing what we can do, okay? Then, so, pyramidal tract, we will complete soon. So, pyramidal tract, this pyramidal tract, it is concerned with, the, it is the largest tract and it is concerned with the motor activities of the body. So, we should uh, remember always this motor tract it comes from the brain towards the periphery and the sensory things it comes uh, it starts in the periphery and goes towards the brain suppose uh, we are you think that we are ironing the cloth okay we are ironing the cloth suddenly what happens our finger will be touching the what is yes, this ironing machine so it will be touching the ironing machine suddenly what happens we will be taking our fingers because it is not in connection with the uh, brain. This is for just an example for uh, saying the sensory and motor thing. So as soon as our hand touches the hot surface, suddenly the sensation will be going and suddenly we will be withdrawing. Suddenly the uh, motor, uh, uh, suddenly the spinal cord, it is spinal arc and it will say, come on, take your hand back like that. So suddenly we will be taking back. And if suppose we are seeing a nice rose flower, okay, we are seeing a rose flower and it has this good fragrance, the color is pink and it is very nice to see. So sensational. So we are seeing sensation from the eyes and we are smelling the aroma of that plant, that fragrance of that flower. So what happens? This sensation will be taken towards the brain. So towards the brain. And so what we will do, uh, brain will give the signal, okay, nice flower, you pluck it. So what happens, signal will be coming from the brain towards the periphery and the motor, our hand, our shoulder, our wrist, our elbow and our everything will get activated. We will walk towards the flower, is it not? And we will stretch our hand towards the flower and we will pluck that. This is the motor activity. What we have seen is the sensation, what we smell is the sensation and what we are doing the activity is the motor. So sensory is always towards the brain and motor is always away from the brain. From the brain it is coming to the periphery. You understand? So this uh, pyramidal tract is very very important to know about the weakness and paralysis. So this pyramidal tract uh, it starts in the uh, primary motor area in the frontal lobe. Primary motor area in the frontal lobe. So suppose you think this is brain and this is the primary motor area. In both sides there is pyramidal tract. Eh? Both sides it is pyramidal tract. So what happens is in the primary motor area this pyramidal tract will be coming. So So there is fan shaped structure, okay. So very very important, please listen otherwise you cannot understand paralysis and CVA. So this is if it will be starting as a fan like structure, it is like what? Sun's rays, sun's rays will be like this. In small days we have run sun, you remember now, with two mountains and sun and rays. You remember this, like sun rays, this is Pyramidal tract. Pyramidal tract will be coming as if a fan shaped structure or like the rays of a sun and it is known as and this thing is known as corona radiator. Corona radiator. 
so by hearing corona i should not get tensed we are in the midst of the pandemic corona la so in corona virus also why it is known as corona why it is known as corona yes in the corona virus there is a layer which consists of so many spikes la which consists of so many spikes which looks like that of sun rays which looks like that of sun rays so it is known as corona so like that there is uh, fanning fanning of the what what is fibers fanning fanning of fibers of the uh, pyramidal tract from the primary motor area and this thing is known as corona radiata and there are some specialized big pyramidal cells big motor cells it is known as bed cells it is known as bed cells b t z b t z so bed cells so this bed cells this bed cells from the bed cells there are so many fibers arising in a fan shaped manner and it comes downwards from the primary motor area and it joins together you know broom stick la broom stick which we used to clean our uh, what clean our surroundings and also clean our home broom stick so in the broom stick i uh, what it will be like this la the area where we clean looks like this and the uh, handle where we hold looks like this so it is like a broom stick you imagine so and it joins together this fibers joins together here in internal capsule internal capsule understood what is internal capsule we told already we discussed is it not internal capsule is the nuclei inside the brain which is responsible for that which is in connection with the motor activities so what happens is there is internal capsule through the internal capsule it comes again downwards this is internal capsule please listen this is internal capsule and it reaches the brain stem brain stem so this is mid brain this is pons this is medulla oblongata it reaches the mid brain uh, sorry mid brain pons and medulla oblongata in the brain stem and in the medulla what happens is 95 percentage of this what pyramidal tract crosses over there is remaining some percentage 90 percentage of the pyramidal tract crosses in the medulla oblongata to understand and this the structure here the crossing over structure is known as it looks like that of a pyramid it looks like that of a pyramid and by crossing this forms a pyramid in the medulla oblongata since it forms a pyramid in its what running in its course it is known as pyramidal tract you understand okay this is also known as cortico spinal tract uh, this uh, what pyramidal tract is also known as cortico spinal tract because it starts in the cortex of the cerebrum and ends in the spinal cord so it is known as cortico spinal tract it is a motor tract and also in the course it forms a pyramid in the medulla oblongata by the crossing of 95 percentage of fibers and so it is known as pyramidal tract okay then after crossing again it descends downwards so some uh, fibers are not crossed very few fibers are not crossed and remaining got crossed and it extends downwards and it reaches the and it reaches the spinal cord and this is the spinal cord okay and it reaches the spinal cord in the spinal cord what happens is in the anterior part it has anterior horn cells and this um, pyramidal tract crossed the fibers crossed the fibers the tract of the it will be coming in relation with the anterior horn cells which is responsible for the what which is responsible for the motor activities of the body from the anterior horn cells so these are the first order neurons from the uh, anterior uh, horn cells what arises second order neuron arises and it supplies the 
first of the periphery. From the anterior horn cell, second order neuron arises, which supplies the periphery. You understand? So, this is the pyramidal tract. So, this is the primary, uh, uh, this is the upper motor, and this is the lower motor neurons. From when it up to which it reaches the anterior horn cells, it is the what upper motor neuron and after that it is the lower motor neuron you understand so this upper motor neuron it extends up to the lumbosacral level so some fibers will be fusing here next there will be another uh, next year, there will be another segment of spinal cord rest will be fusing here some lower motor neuron rises. then again rest will be coming to the next spinal cord like that it will be coming reaching up to the lumbosacral region and up to the lumbosacral region this upper motor neurons of the pyramidal tract is situated and lower motor neuron it is responsible for the activities okay this is responsible for the activities of the body this is about the uh, corticospinal tract or pyramidal tract and we will discuss weakness and paralysis when there is lesion in the uh, if there is lesion if there is change in lesion in uh, if it is in the corona radiator, what symptoms are different? If it is in the internal capsule, the symptoms are different. If it is in the medulla, symptoms are different. If it is downwards, symptoms are different. If it is at the uh, angle of the spinal cord, again symptoms will be different. So that's why I have explained this much of anatomy, physiology for your better understanding. I hope you understand this. If you are having any doubts, please put in the comment box. We will discuss, we will find an answer. So thank you for your patient listening. I hope this class you, ha you have understand more than the other sessions. So happy learning, happy day. Thank you so much. So if you are happy, happy, please subscribe, please share. Thank you so much. We'll meet in the next session. Thank you.